Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing really, really well today. I wanna to thank you for just hanging out with me for a few minutes today while we talk about a video that I've kind of been thinking about for the last few weeks, but I'm actually glad I waited. And what we're gonna talk about today is a Docker container called ByteStash. So if you're not familiar with ByteStash, which is perfectly understandable, uh, if we jump over here to their GitHub repository, it says the ByteStash is a code snippet storage solution written in React and Node.js. Um, and here we can see that this is actively being developed. And just as a quick little demonstration here before we jump into some of the other stuff, this is my instance up here. We can see that we've got ByteStash up there on the top. We've got a version number. Uh, we've got the option to search snippets. Um, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's take a look at what I've actually got here. So this is just me messing around this morning just to uh, get this little demo set up. So I've got this byte stash, byte stash uh, thing here. Um, and we'll see that it's got um, a couple of tags of uh, plain text and C sharp. And then it was updated three minutes ago. Uh, so we open this up here. We can see um, it's got it's got the name. It's got a description. You know what? Let's not use that one. That one's not a good. Let's use this one instead. So this one is called Byte Stash. The description is Byte Stash Docker Compose. I've got a tag down here and you can add additional tags to these for like categorization, things like that. Uh, below that, we've got uh, the actual code snippet, which in this case is a Docker Compose. Um, and in fact, this is the Docker Compose that we'll be using to deploy Byte Stash. Um, and that's basically all we've got here. You know, we can scroll, you know, left and right and whatever in here. Uh, we can see that this is in YAML formatting. We can see not only is it kind of color coded to suit, but we can actually see the little YAML over here. Now, if we wanted to edit that, all we've got to do is click the edit button right there. And then we can edit the title, uh, the description, the categories. If we wanted to add categories, uh, again, test, we can see now we've got Docker Compose and test, or we can delete that if we want to. Um, next, we've got a code fragment. So code fragments are relatively new to the most recent updates to, uh, to Byte Stash. Um, and basically the idea behind uh, code fragments is that you might have like the same snippet or the same, you might have multiple snippets with the same functionality across different uh, coding languages. And maybe you've got one that's, you know, like for updating uh, an operating system, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe you've got one that uses Pac-Man and one you uses apt and one that uses yum. You could put all of those in here as different code fragments. Uh, in fact, if we can scroll down, um, we can add a new fragment um, and call this, you know, demo two, right? Whatever. Uh, and then select a language. Um, and then, you know, just, uh, let's, let's, let's select, let's select bash, right? Uh, and we're just gonna drop this in, oops, we're gonna cop, come on there, oh, come on. Man, the last couple of days have been testing for me. Anyway, so now, now we've got, um, so now we've got this code fragment um, that is called main uh, and the, the coding language is YAML. And then up here it actually shows that we have two code fragments. I should have mentioned that. But if we scroll down, then we can see main and we've got demo two. This one is in bash. And of course this one is in YAML. So, and we can continue to add more fragments as we need to just, I wanted to just kind of throw this out for demonstrative purposes and we can click save, right? <clears throat> so now we can see our byte stash. This is moved because it's the most recently updated. Um, but here we can see, uh, now we've got main. And if we toggle this, we can see what other code snippets are in here. And if we want to, we can just copy straight from there. Or of course we can open it up and take a look and copy it from in there as well. Um, so really, really dig the simplicity of this. Um, if we close that, uh, we can do stuff like share. And, um, and in fact, let's slow down right here. Uh, the little hover right there, a little up arrow for share, create a new share link. And you can say, do you want it to require authentication? Yes or no. I believe at this point, the only authentication is the single account that we'll create in the Docker Compose. Though I do know that people have requested user accounts for this. I don't know if that's gonna be addressed, but it is something that has been requested. So you can also say that it'll expire in an hour, two days, 30 minutes, whatever. Um, and then you can just create a share link. And right there, never expires. So if I copy this, pop open a new window, right there is where it is. Uh, but because I'm not logged in, because I don't have the right authentication for this, all I can do is copy it. I can't do anything else with it. So uh, that's kind of the functionality as far as that is concerned. Um, but then of course, if I wanted to, I could delete that link so that it's no longer uh, available to be shared 
or, or received by anybody because that share uh, link no longer exists. I love that they've done that. Um, and then of course, you know, here's that little demo or the little thing that I tried to share earlier that didn't make any sense. So if I wanted to, I could just delete that and click delete and there we go. Um, <clears throat> so from here, we can also search uh, snippets and we can, uh, you know, like we can do uh, that and we can say, well, what category are you looking for? Well, right there, filter by categories, there's your Docker Compose. Uh, we can filter by languages, if we wanna do that. We can uh, sort by newest first, oldest first, alphabetically, A to Z or Z to A. Uh, we can put this in grid mode, list mode, uh, create a new snippet if we wanted to do that. Um, and then there are some settings in here for like compact view, if we click that and click save, it just kind of tightens everything up a little bit. And that's all that does. Um, do you wanna sh uh, show code preview, yes or no? You can turn that on and off. If it is on, it'll ask you how many lines do you want to see over here in the little preview window? Um, do you wanna include so code in search queries? I feel like that the answer for me uh, for that would be yes. Uh, there may be something in the code that I remember before I remember the name of the code. Um, so I would definitely wanna search code uh, within my search queries. Uh, you can also show uh, ex uh, categories, you can expand categories, and you can show line numbers. So let's just check all of those and click save. And there we go. Now we're kind of built out um, the way that this would work uh, for, for anybody who happens to install this. My words are really failing me. It's been a real weird couple of weeks and I am, I am still mentally recovering. So I apologize. I'm, we're gonna get through this together, I promise. So <clears throat> now that we've kind of taken a look at that, uh, I wanna talk about why I didn't, uh, why I waited. And I didn't know that I was waiting for this specific reason. But I'm glad I did, right? If we jump over to Reddit, uh, we can see that the developer has re uh, made a post three days ago saying that ByteStash version 1.4.0 um, has been released. It jumped from 1.2.0 to 1.4.0. However, if we take a look, we can we can see that I'm actually on 1.4.1. Uh, so there's actually been an update since this post went live. Um, in the new version, that's where they added authentication for username and password. Um, they also added a JWT token um, to create the cookie to make sure that the account login uh, or authentication or whatever expires whenever you tell it to. In this case, by default, 24 hours, but you can change that if you want. They also added fragments, uh, meaning that snippets can have multiple fragments to store multiple bits of code in varying languages, uh, which is kind of what I showed, talked about earlier with this having, you know, like this version, this main, and then this, this demo two down here, where we talked about, you know, maybe you've got different code snippets for, you know, updating different types of Linux systems that all use a different thing. This could be called Linux update, and you could have a different, uh, a different updating thing in each one of these. So that's what that was about. Um, mom, mom, mom. So, <clears throat> excuse me, snippets cannot be shared. I'm glad that they add that or added that to the new version. Again, it says that it can require authentication or be open to the public and it can have time limits set on it. Dig that. They improved the code snippet editor and they allowed sub paths. Uh, we'll talk about sub paths here in a bit, but it was, they did it for a very specific reason, which I actually appreciate once my dumb brain figured it out. So here you can, in the environment variables, you can specify that if you want or need to. Then they also did some you know, other server-side improvements and added links for version tags and including in-app change logs. So um, yeah, so it looks like they've reached over 100 stars. Let's see where it is now. So in three days, they have gone from about 100 to more than 220, so that's cool. Uh, if you guys dig this project, definitely go over to, to GitHub and give it a star. I would right now, but I'm not logged in. So. That 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 is basically ByteStash in a nutshell. Um, so let's let's take a look at getting this installed, so we can kind of get an idea of what everything looks like here and talk about some stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead. And I'm just going to copy that. I didn't need to, to highlight that. Anyway, I'm going to get logged in to uh, to the the system. I'm going to deploy this in, and we'll come right back. Okay, so here we are. We are in our in portainer. If my words would work, man. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new stack, and then we're going to click add a stack. And then we're just gonna paste in our stack uh, or our Docker Compose, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, those names are kind of interchangeable here. Um, so let's let's talk about this Docker Compose just a little bit. Um, our, uh, up at the top, we start with services. Uh, we don't need to have the version numbers anymore with the newest version of Docker Compose. Uh, in fact, uh, deploying either via portainer or command line will throw up a little like, hey, you don't need that anymore. 
Um, so our first service here is Byte Stash. Uh, our image is actually pulling from the GitHub container repository, uh, and we can see that it's the, the latest version of Byte Stash. The container name, again, Byte Stash, makes total sense to me. And then the volumes, uh, basically, where are you going to store this? So uh, Byte Stash uses a SQL database uh, to store your, your snippets and that sort of thing. Um, so just make sure that you've got this mapped. Um, uh, maybe it's a SQLite. I apologize, I think it's a SQLite, I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, it uses a database, that's the key takeaway here, and you don't have to do anything to set it up because it just does it all automatically. Um, and so just however, wherever you wanna store this, go ahead and put that where, where it makes sense on your server. Uh, ports, by, de by default, it runs on port 5000. However, if you've already got something running on port 5000, you know, you can change this to like, oops, to like 50, oops, 50, 50. Screw it, it's 5,500 now. Uh, just don't change the colon or anything after it, just change that first half there. The base path under environment variables, this is if you need to put it in like, you know, mysite.com slash byte stash. Um, don't put a URL in there, don't, don't do that. It will, it will not like that at all, and I know from experience. So unless you're going to put this in a subdirectory on your domain, uh, don't, don't do that, just, just leave that empty. Um, and then below that, we've got um, authentication, username, and password. Now, if you just want this to be open to the public, if you're just gonna store this locally and don't wanna mess with it, um, then you can, you can take out like all of this uh, authentication stuff. You don't, you don't need that. Uh, or you can just leave it blank, I guess. It's probably the better way to handle that. Um, but we're gonna leave the Byte Stash uh, username and password in there because I don't feel like changing it right now. Um, and then you will need a JWT secret um, to, to generate the cookie to do the expiration stuff within uh, currently 24 hours. Of course, you can change that to, you know, like, um, you know, like, like, like say 48 hours, if I could, there we go. Um, so in order to generate uh, this JWT secret, there are a couple of ways you can go about doing that. The easiest way that I have found is with this website right here. This is jwtsecret.com slash generate. Again, everything that I talk about in this video will be linked in the video description down below. Now, in previous videos, I have used websites like this and people have been less than happy uh, that I've used a third party solution to generate tokens and secrets and things like that. If you wanna do it locally, that is perfectly acceptable. Uh, if you want to run the commands on your local machine and generate those tokens or those, those whatever, that you're, 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 if, if you know, or if you're uncomfortable with me doing it this way, you probably know how to do it that way. Um, so go ahead and do that. But, um, but this works just as well. Um, they don't have any idea where this is going. They don't know what server this is going to. So we're just generating a secret, right? It's just, it's just that. So I'm gonna click copy. Um, I'm gonna come back over here to Portainer. Um, and I'm just gonna delete that and paste in the new secret. Um, so uh, that's it. Like that, that really is the whole, uh, the whole Docker compose. Again, we talked about the uh, token expiration there and the restart unless stopped. You could change that to always or never. Um, it depends on what you wanna do, how you want this to be handled, if your server reboots or powers off or whatever, right? Um, but this is this is how simple it really is. Uh, once we're happy with how this looks and whatever, uh, we're just gonna scroll down and click on uh, deploy the stack. Or if you're doing this command line, you can do your Docker compose up dash D. Um, but we're gonna give this a second to do its thing. And uh, then once it does, we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later and it looks like this is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and click right there. And it says it's running, but let's take a look at the logs. Uh, and right here, this kind of looks scary. This, it's, it's just building the database, that, that's it. It's using a snippets.db file there uh, for the database. So there you go. Um, and then here's all of the tables. Here's all of the tables that it created um, to store your snippets. And then uh, it says the database initialization completed successfully and the server is running on port 5000. Technically it's correct, it's running on port 5000 inside the container. However, remember we changed that to 5,500 here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then remember I used byte stash and, and password. There we go. So now we're logged in, right? And at this point now we can start creating new snippets and doing whatever we wanna do. Um, you know, we can manipulate the settings here. The world is your oyster, so to speak, with what you wanna do with this. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I did wanna mention that maybe I should've mentioned earlier is that you can put this on a reverse proxy uh, very, very easily, whether you're using you know, any of them that are out there, you know, Nginx Proxy Manager, Caddy, Swag, um, 
traffic, Cloudflare channels, whatever the case happens to be. Uh, what's cool about this container, and I appreciate what the editor, the, the, the developer did, I was reading editor right there. What I appreciate is in the Docker Compose, there is no URL path. So there's no, <laughs> there, there, there's no need to set your URL here. That's what I originally thought the base path was for. I was wrong. So uh, you can just point your reverse proxy to this and it will just work. That's what I did over here on this byte.dbtech.dev. Uh, I just, I spun that up and pointed a Cloudflare tunnel to it and it just worked with no issue. So I didn't have to do anything in the Docker Compose or the stack or whatever here. When I deployed it, I just pointed my reverse proxy to it and we were good to go. So um, yeah, so definitely check out this project if you're interested in something like this. Uh, go give uh, go give Jordan, uh, Jordan Dalby here, go give him a star if you dig this project. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can like and subscribe. Those are the free ways. Or you can become a channel member or a patron and uh, get early or get, get, well, not early access this week, you can get ad-free access to my content uh, all of the time, but, but very often early access to my content before it goes live to the general public. Uh, but again, always no ads in here. Um, also, um, you can do things like go use my Amazon affiliate link or my RackNerd affiliate link and actually get something uh, something you can you can use or touch or, or whatever. So everything will be linked in the video description down below if you wanna do that. Um, but I think with all that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. Again, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.